Today's video is going to be on delayed cord clamping, placental transfusion. But first, I'd like to introduce myself. My name is Tecari Matisit. I'm the mom of three boys, Ashayaka, Oteo, and Tlewitzin. And our roots are originally from Mexico, from what is today known as Jalisco and Zacatecas, Mexico. So we have the Wiradica Mexica bloodline. And I was born and raised in California. So I grew up Chicana. I've been living on the East Coast for about 13 years now, currently living in Far Rockaway, New York. And so I first want to acknowledge the indigenous peoples of this land, the Lenape people. And um, I'm also a midwife student. And so today's video, today's video is to honor mom, baby, and that grandmother placenta. You know, historically, as a lot of traditional indigenous midwives have shared with me, um, when a baby was born, that cord was not cut immediately. The cord was left alone to stop pulsating naturally on its own. Um, you know, historically, those sterile stainless steel instruments of the, the scissors, the clamp, they didn't exist. Um, that uh, uh, plastic clamp that I see them use in um, the hospitals, brain centers, hospitals, they didn't exist. You know, down in Mexico, we have the Mayahuel, um, which is today known as the Maguey plant. And that Mayahuel still today gives a lot of medicine to our people down there. And um, they had this fiber that was taken from Mayahuel, and that turned into string for the cord. And um, you know, we also have uh, Itzli or Tekpa, which is the obsidian knife. And that was what was used to cut the cord. I've had the privilege and honor of going to New Zealand a couple times and um, the land of the Maori out there. And I saw a few families who used the flax fiber. So we had the Maya well fiber, the flax fiber, and I know up here in Turtle Island, North America, um, they've shared that they use the buffalo sinew for the cord. So, you know, traditionally things were done a little different. And yes, after 500 plus years of colonization, miseducation, the indigenous Holocaust, you know, cultural genocide today, a lot of our traditions have been distorted, lost. But like our elders are always saying, you know, our knowledge is still alive. Our history is alive. You know, our knowledge is there in the fire in a lot of these medicinal plants that we have. So I'll share that much on that because it's on, you know, delayed cord clamping, placental transfusion, we wanna focus on that. But every mammal, every mammal waits until the cord stops pulsating before cutting the placenta. You know, according to ACOG, um, delayed cord clamping is defined as waiting 30 to 60 seconds or longer after birth before the cord is cut. But unfortunately today, um, many providers cut the cord within seconds before that first breath of life. You know, there's studies on thousands and thousands and thousands of babies of how they cut the cord at five seconds, 10 seconds, 15 seconds, you know, and all these comparisons. But um, it's important, it's important to just let the, the cord stop pulsating. Um, there's blood in the baby's body and there's blood in the grandmother placenta. You know, we want, that the, the blood that is sh to be shared between grandmother placenta and baby. Over the years, um, with our doula certification workshops, my sister Mary Batelli and I, we co-founded and co-direct traditional doula arts. We've been using Penny Simpkins' visual video on um, the placenta and the baby. So for those of you, you know, who are into visuals, here's the placenta, here's the cord, here's the baby, and here's, the cord, the message, the overall point is don't cut the cord until it stops pulsating, pulsating on its own. It takes two to five minutes. That's it, you know? And what we want is the baby, what is shared between baby and grandmother placenta is about 450 milliliters of blood. So this is a 500 milliliter water bottle. The, I put 450 here, you know, that's what we want the baby to get all of this. What's happening is when the baby is born, baby gets 300 milliliters at birth. And when the cord is not, you know, it takes two to five minutes 
for the remaining blood to transfer to the baby from grandmother placenta. So that's about 150 milliliters of blood, about one third. And, and so when the cord is cut immediately, the baby doesn't get all the blood that is shared between baby and grandmother placenta. We want baby to get all that blood. So, you know, there's benefits of delayed cord clamping, at least for premature um, births, babies, you know, there's, there's a consensus that, that delayed cord clamping, it reduces the rates of intraventricular hemorrhage, so bleeding in the brain. It reduces the rate of blood in, the rate of blood transfusions. It reduces um, sepsis, infection, anemia. It, it increases hematocrit hemoglobin levels in the first day of life. And then for term infants, it increases iron stores, which are important for neurodevelopment. It, it gives um, stem cells for, for organ growth. And there's, uh, you know, nowadays um, stem cells can be collected. It can be preserved, stored in family blood banks for future family emergencies or donated, donated to other families in needs. So overall, the blood supply is good for our brain, it's good for our organs to function at full capacity. The blood supply gives the baby warmth, the, you know, there's benefits, uh, it lessens the likelihood of anemia, it increases infant survival rate. So it's about life and death, you know. Our ancestors were warriors. And we need to keep the traditions alive. It starts at birth. You know, in terms of the risk, the risk about um, that delayed cord clamping leads to postpartum hemorrhage, studies show otherwise. That um, delayed cord clamping increases bilirubin levels and therefore causes jaundice. Studies show otherwise. Uh, in cases of recess, um, when a baby needs to be resuscitated or meconium aspiration, you know, they cut the cord immediately, take the baby way far over there, over there, away from mom, you know, and then follow with the resuscitation procedure. But there's, you know, providers talking about how that could be done right there and then, you know, the resuscitation procedure, when needed, could be done right there and then with the baby right next to mom. So, you know, I got to attend uh, midwifery today for the first time, just the last weekend. And uh, over the years, I've read Dr. Judith Mercer's work on delayed cord clamping and she presented at the conference, and I wanna read this quote from her. It says, there's no evidence that early cord clamping is better, and evidence is lacking regarding long-term harm from immediate or delayed cord clamping. Until we have sufficient appropriate evidence showing otherwise, it's better to mimic nature than to interfere with um, intricate complex and only partially understood design of the physiologic neonatal transition. So, you know, in terms of those risks, myths, um, whatever talk about the you know the negative things of delayed cord clamping studies show otherwise i highly recommend dr judith mercer's um, research um, academic publications if you're into all that so you know starting with the 20th century okay that's when they changed the cord clamping and now uh, the cord is immediately cut but day by day this is changing provider by provider this is changing family by family this is changing you know it's important. It's important for the baby to get that other 150 milliliters of blood. It, 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 that blood helps. It helps with iron, with red blood cells, with white blood cells to fight infection, with uh, plasma vol cells for volume expansion, with um, oxygen, with stem cells, with antibodies. You know, in terms of those stem cells too, I want to say I've read studies of how, at least with animals, the stem cells um, have been, you know, they have that healing power. They've been known to repair the heart, the brain, the lungs, the liver, the muscle of, of an, with animals. And then at least with living beings with humans, there's studies on how it can, those stem cells can help um, with cerebral palsy, with uh, Alzheimer's. So, you know, there's more on stem cells, um, but I really, really believe that decolonization begins at birth. You know, um, peyote women, and I've been working on, on collecting stories too about the use of peyote in pregnancy and birth. And so that's the title of the book, Decolonization Begins at Birth. So, you know, we need to allow, we need to allow for babies to have that delayed cord clamping placental transfusion. They call it placental transfusion because it includes not only delayed cord clamping, but also the milking of the cord. So it's important to not cut the cord before the first breath of life. You know, the way I see it, the way I understand it, cutting that cord before the first breath of life is an act of violence. It's causing cold separation, fear, anxiety. It's trauma for the baby. 
you know, traditionally, that's not the way we brought babies into this, you know, world, into our beautiful Tlanantintlali, our Mother Earth. You know, it's just, you know, not that way. Regardless, regardless of race, class, gender, each baby should get the best care. And it should start with that, you know, with that umbilical cord, with delaying, um, with letting the cord just stop pulsating out on its own, you know. I was uh, watching a video the other day by Robin Lim. She was talking about her work out in India, and she shared a story about a stillbirth born, uh, a stillborn birth, about um, you know a traditional midwife who had some holy water, and used that water on the, on the baby on the grandmother placenta, and after a while the baby gave its first breath of life. So it made me think about traditional indigenous midwives, about, you know, water and the, the, the sacredness of that element of how some of us spiritual people, we, we go around collecting these sacred waters from these sacred mountains and the manantiales, you know, those springs. And we have different maracanes, taitas, mitotianes who, you know, all these grandmothers, grandfathers who bless those waters for us and they're on our altars so you know we got to use the laid cord clamping placenta transfusion these sacred waters all together it's about life and death it's about giving the children you know the babies from the moment they're born the best care all their blood you know so i um hope that after this video you know you, you start thinking about delayed cord clamping and placenta transfusion and you know, all three of my sons had the, the home birth. For me, the home is the Temascal, the sweat lodge, and that's where my children were born, on the earth. So all, I had three different midwives. They're all into the delayed cord clamping, you know. It, it, I, as for the most part, I know, like whether you're CM, CNM, CPM, as long as you're working in the home, with home birth state they, they're into the delayed cord clamping so thank you thank you thank you and for all the other you know providers um that aren't it, it you know it's about life and death and it's about protecting our mothers our babies that grandmother placenta giving that grandmother placenta and the baby the respect that we should from the moment a baby is born you know so um, I hope this video is helpful and uh, like I said if you're into more academic research publications I highly recommend Dr. Judith Mercer's work. You can go to cord cordclamping.info too for more information on delayed cord clamping, placental transfusion. Um, hope you're, you're thinking a little bit you know because it, it just makes me think too like when say you need some blood and you go to the hospital and they don't give you the remaining one third that you need. Think about it. How's that going to affect your body? So how is this, you know, affecting our, our babies? We we talk about seven generations and praying for the children. You know, it starts from birth. So help us with your prayers. You know, help us with your education. Help us in the in the home and the birthing centers and the hospitals to give the best care to those babies. You know. So thank you to all those traditional midwives all over the world um, who understand delayed cord clamping, placenta transfusion, and all the good work out there for all the babies, for all the moms, for the grandmother placenta, for the families. Thank you.